All right, uh, so I think we're good to go for today. Um, yes, so last time we took a look at MechWarrior 3rd Edition, um, and we also took a look at Stars Without Number, uh, and how those two games handled mechs. Um, and the end of this, the purpose of what we're doing here, uh, to put it pretty simply, Yes, uh, is to hack this game, World of Dungeons Turbo. Uh, yeah, so we are uh, looking at a variety of games, um, and we are seeing how they handle mechs, because uh, this is going to be a game about mechs pretty much as its main deal. So what we found was last time, interestingly, uh, Mech Warrior um, is a, a game pretty similar in a lot of ways to Burning Wheel, uh, which is something I didn't anticipate. Um, but it is also a game uh, that is not about mechs. <laughs> It is a game about everything around mechs. Um, so, you know, in uh, the design feedback channel on, on Gauntlet Slack, people were like, well, that's because Battletech handles mechs. It's like, well, yes, but... Um, Battletech only handles the mecha combat, and it feels like Mech Warrior 3rd Edition, in general, is a lot less interested in mechs than I anticipated. So that was that was still an interesting and valuable thing to learn, but didn't really help very much for what we are doing. Um, Stars Without Number, however, actually does talk about mechs a little bit, um, even though the game is not about them. <laughs> the game is about, uh, well, it's a game about space opera and emulating traveler and all that kind of thing uh and mechs are just a very small corner of that sprawling project um so we saw that that uh, stars without number uh has three different types of mechs um and three sizes of mechs um uh the the mech size is quite mechanically significant um it affects their damage, um, so mechs of a certain size can ignore damage from everything below that size class. Um, it affects their speed, uh, and it also affects their damage. When they take damage, if you have a suit class mech, you're in big trouble. If you have a larger mech, you're not so bad off. Um, and yeah, uh, that's that's the effects of size. Um, it has a strategy for targeting. Um, so multi-targeting is a thing it allows. Uh, however, if you multi-target, then there's a possibility of uh, um, not actually doing enough damage to any single target. If you try to focus fire, then there's a possibility of wasting your attacks. Um, and you can't fire personal weapons and mech weapons in the same round. Okay, sure. Um, interestingly, mechs get their users' abilities, get their pilots' abilities. So, like, the mechs can actually do things like the pilot normally would be able to unmounted. So there's no, like, special class of mech abilities. It's just... Um, the, the PC abilities apply directly to what the mech can do. Um, and uh, the repair cost is determined by mech size. That's another reason uh, why size is really important. Um, no no uh, innuendos uh, implied there. Um, and... Yeah, they have some rules for dealing with hostile environments, which is a pretty standard thing for mech games. Um, not that interesting, though. Um, and rules for maintenance. Um, so this could be like a clock. This is also a thing that could be clocked.
the longer you run a mech without having it maintained, uh, the more penalties build up. Um, and then they had all these cool mech fittings, which are like things you can add onto your mech, which I'm definitely going to look at in the future. Uh, and also, um, weaponry uh, works with the piloting skill, and uh, the there are damage values on weapons, AP values, armor piercing values, um, class restrictions based on their size, and tags applied to them. So that's how mechs work in Stars Without Number. It's a pretty nice little system. Um, but I think we can probably do something a little more snappy and interesting. Okay, so we're going to look at our next game now. Um, next game is, let's start out with the big one. Let's start out with Lancer uh, version 1.6. Latest beta release of this game. Uh, so this is a very big game, um, very, very big game, very mecha focused, very big. Um, so yeah, Lancer, um, this is pretty interesting stuff. Um, so your character in the world of Lancer is a mechanized cavalry unit pilot. Um, so like... Remember, in Mech Warrior, you can play a character who is not a Mech Warrior. <laughs> Even though it's the title of the game, <laughs> you don't have to play a Mech Warrior. In Lancer, you are always a Mech Pilot. You are always a Mech Cav Pilot. So let's, let's write that down. This is important. Uh, so... premise um, Lancer PCs are always mecha pilots there are no exceptions okay so that that is really interesting right because that narrows down the design space a lot um, that means that a lot of the stuff that mech warrior has to concern itself with Lancer can just be like, nah, like, nah, they're, they're NPCs. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, we're just focused on pilots and what pilots do. Um, and let's continue then. Uh, so you have different types of mechs. Um, There are Dragoons, Cataphracts, Hussars, and Lancers. Um, these are all different types of mech cav, and you can play as any one of them. Um, so I think we'll maybe just take a quick note of that. So uh, PC types. Uh, you can play as Dragoons, uh, Cataphracts, uh, Hussars, and Lancers. So these are uh, basically uh, Mech Infantry, uh, Cataphracts are... Heavy mechs. Uh, hussars are scouts, infiltrators, black ops. And then we have lancers. 
the game is named after Lancers, and they are basically shock troops. Uh, can these be modeled like Apocalypse World vehicle types? That's an interesting idea, um, definitely. So, idea, um, I will put this at this top of the document. Ideas uh, model vehicle types after Apocalypse World vehicles. And I mean, we might as well look at the mechs in Apocalypse World, right? Remember to look at mecha in the, what is that playbook? the uh, something marine I don't know um, anyway um, yeah I'll, I'll definitely check that out the space marine thingy yeah that's that's the one um, Now, let's keep looking at Lancers. So Lancers are basically um, like shock troops um, or sp Space Marine Mammal. Uh, these are like shock troops or heavy cavalry. They just like look for an opening and then charge. Um, okay, so those are the different types of, of PCs. Um, they could be Dragoons, Cataphracts, Hussars, or Lancers, depending on what role they play on the battlefield. All right. Um, there's a bunch of setting information, blah, blah, blah. Character is a pilot. Okay. Um, so dice, it uses d20s and d6. Uh, it's not super important. It uses space for the mecha combat. Um, it uses skill checks. So we'll make a note of that. Skill checks. D8 and D12 never get love. Uh, <laughs> I guess they don't, do they? Um, yeah. It's it, often the D6, the D10, or the D20. To the point that I often forget that the D12 exists. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, so there are skill checks. They use a D20 and um, they uh, basically just go um, 10 or higher is a success, nine or lower is a failure, and a 20 plus is a crit. And the reason why you can get higher than 20 is because you can add D6s onto your rolls. Um, 
and then you can get uh, accuracy and difficulty. So accuracy is, um, it basically builds up your dice pool and difficulty reduces your dice pool um, if, of D6s. So it's like advantage and disadvantage, but it's a little bit different from uh, how those work in a lot of games. I'll just add this to a separate heading. Um, is represented or is a representation of advantage uh, and adds uh, d6s and difficulty is disadvantage and subtracts d6s from this pool. Um, they cancel each other out and they do not stack. So you, you make a d6 dice pool and then you take the highest out of your d6. So it's roll d20, then roll a d6 dice pool, take the highest and add it to the d20 result fairly complex uh, rolling system. Uh, so you pick, um, take the highest result from D6 dice pool and add it to your roll. So the highest possible roll you can get in this game is a 26. All right, so the types of skill checks. So unlike stars without number, you can see that there are two types of skill checks, pilot and mech. So this is unlike Stars Without Number. Why? Because this is a game about mechs. Um, so, uh, Um, and probably that is too complex for what we want to do, but we'll think about it. Okay, so when you use your pilot's natural ability, skill, experience, or personality to overcome a problem, you can make a pilot skill check. Uh, these use your pilot's traits and background, which are described in the sections below. Um, okay, so you have background and traits, and both of these can give advantage. And, okay, so the, uh, so background, okay, so pilot gives you uh, background um, trait uh, or situational. So these are advantage um, and the mech, the mech gives you, when you utilize your mech systems, uh, sensors, weapons, or raw power to overcome a problem, you must make a mech skill check. Uh, when making a mech skill check, you can apply your mech statistical bonuses to the check, such as hull, agility, systems, or engineering. So notice one thing that they are doing in this game. 
is because they have this very strong division between the pilot play and the mech play. In the pilot play, you don't have attributes, you don't have stats, right? All you have are backgrounds and traits. So it's it's kind of similar to um, something like uh, Tech Noir or Fate, um, whereas in the mech side of things, you have stats like you would in a D20 game. Um, so you can apply your mech statistical bonuses to the check, such as hull, agility, systems, or engineering. It's a very strongly bifurcated game between, on the one hand, we have this kind of indie story game, and on the other hand, we have this more trad, D20-ish, um, uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, square-based, um, tactical combat game. And the mech attributes, just because uh, pilot reminds me of Lady Blackbird. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, the, definitely that it would, that could be a reference as well. Um, okay, so these are the possible attributes they use: hull, agility, systems, or engineering. Um, okay. Um, that's important. So. In general, you can't use bonuses from your pilot background on mech skill checks and vice versa. Your pilot background tends to describe the things your character did before become, becoming a mech pilot. However, the GM can lift this restriction at their discretion. Category specific, chuck another D6 in. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah, you're building, building some, some uh, D6 dice pools. Yes, yes. Um, so notice here that uh, this is enforcing that divide between the two sides of the game, right? Um, you have to have, if you have a strongly bifurcated rule system like this game does, uh, you have to have rules to manage the connection between the two different game systems. Um, and in this case, uh, it's mostly saying they're distinct and the GM can lift the restriction at their discretion. So I don't know, you figure it out, right? Um, but yeah, I can see why they would do that. Uh, and you can make a contested skill check. Okay, whatever, that's just very standard stuff. Um, During the course of your mission, you will be called upon while doing mech combat to make attacks. So this is only during mech combat that you make attacks. Um, attacks are not skill checks. Uh, they use a d20 roll, adding bonuses like a skill check, but target a specific defense of the enemy you are targeting, evasion or electronic defense. This means the target number could be higher or lower than 10. Remember in the pilot side of things, the target number is always 10, if you're over or under 10. Um, an attack is successful if it equals or exceeds the target's defense. An attack is not a contested check and is often listed using the appropriate attack and defense statistic, uh, such as targeting versus evasion or systems versus electronic defense. Um, so uh, you don't have the uh, opponent roll versus your targeting they you just roll versus their uh versus their evasion value uh similar to how some skills work in burning wheel um for some for more information on statistics and attacks see the section on mech combat the most kind of common kinds of attacks are uh 
through the attack action, the unarmed attack action, and the invasion tech action. So there's different action classes in the tactical combat game. Um, so when you attack somebody in the pilot game, um, you are just going to make a skill check. And remember, it's not like you, it's not like you're saying, I want to um, sway this person or I want to hunt this person like you would in Blades of the Dark uh, or, uh, you know, something like, uh, you know, uh, Fate uh, Accelerated, right? You're, you're not using like a specific approach or anything like that. You just make the skill check and then factor in your advantages based on your background and traits. Um, so there's really only one role. Um, there's only one check to make outside of the mech play. So th this is a very simple system. Um, the mech side of things is very complex. Uh, so, yes, attacks, only in the mech game, uh, it is a, um, you roll with an attribute, uh, versus um, opponent's defensive attribute score, um, not opposed role. So yeah, you can look here and see um, that in addition to uh, these mech attributes, let's 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 go take a a closer look here at combat. I'm not super interested in it, but I do want to take a look. So how do you get targeting? Is that How do you get that? Is it a drive stat? Ah, a mech's targeting is added as a bonus to its ranged and melee attacks. Targeting increases as you level up and cannot go higher than plus six unless boosted by a shell. Ah. Interesting. So is there a section on advancement?
Should be under license. Ah, your core starts at level zero with 20 HP plus zero targeting and plus zero to all stats. Okay, so you start at plus zero and then you um, can increase that when you level. Okay. So targeting is another stat in addition to hull agility systems and engineering. And evasion. Oh, your evasion is eight plus your agility. So it's a derived stat. Evasion and speed are derived stats. Okay. Okay. So there's like primary and derived stats as well as, as targeting. Uh, And uh, so derived stats like evasion uh, and what are the other ones? Speed, sensor range, electronic defense. primary attributes. So fairly complicated stuff. Um, so I don't know if there's anything more I want to look at in terms of combat, but we'll, let's go back and look at some of the other stuff in the game. Ah, missions. So this game is split up into missions. Um, a mission might encompass one or several play sessions. Uh, so it's considerably longer than, say, a score in uh, Blades in the Dark. Um, essentially, whatever story or objective the GM has written that can be completed in a discrete amount of time, such as destroying a target, evacuating civilians, uncovering a conspiracy, or holding the line against enemy attack. Uh, mission always begins and ends back at a base, so there is an uptime, downtime kind of deal. Uh, and you might visit a base multiple times during the mission. Um, a base is loosely defined as any safe, secure place controlled by an organization friendly to you. It can be the same place you return to over and over again, or it can be a series of different places. You might stop, at, stop off at base mid-mission, that's fine. And then they have uh, long rest, short rest. Um, basically, you can get a full repair with a long rest. Um, 10 hours of rest. And the short rest, um, you do get some benefits, but they're limited. So this game has uh, missions, um, it has uh, repair, uh, resting, um, and has uh, 
full repair. Uh, it's a long rest. Uh, 10 hours. Um, and a repair. Uh, short rest. Okay. So your character. Character and Lancer has two components, the pilot and the mech. Each is dependent on the other to succeed and each plays with slightly different roles. Your pilot represents the person inside the mech and has background traits and talents. Um, mech is the machine, has core shell and many advanced systems and weapons. Uh, yeah, it is pretty detailed, the, the, the mech building in this game. Um, your character's general experience, training, and resources are tracked by your license level. This is very important. Um, this is super important. So license level... Um, Uh, you start at license level zero, and when you complete a mission, you level. So every time you complete a mission, you level up. Um, a character starts at zero, level zero, uh, and they level up, and then characters can advance to level 15. When a character levels up, they can increase their core statistics, choose new licenses to gain shell options, and gain new talents. So there is no money in this game. Uh, there's no, um, by default, uh, no money. Um, everything is determined by your licenses. For progression. Uh, so that's a definite option. However, there are um, there are some other uh, optional rules which do introduce money, which we'll also take a look at because the, this is something I've been thinking about a lot. Uh, what to do with that? Right. So backgrounds, you know, whatever, uh, traits, par uh, characteristics or personality traits. Uh, these are, you pick two positive ones and one negative one. Um, I mean, I don't know, kind of interesting talents, similar to what we saw in um, Voodoo Breakers, right? Um, talents over here. So I think I'm good with just background and talents. Like, I think that's a good mix. I don't think we need to go into um, traits. Or sorry, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's probably overkill. Okay. Um, this is all the stuff we already talked about. Um, combat is resolved nar uh, narratively. Player facing roles. So some skill checks are dangerous. Um, and if you fail a dangerous skill check, you suffer harm. So this is like a way of dealing with the fact that the skill check system is so simple, right? Um, so we'll go back and add that to the list here. Normal and dangerous. 
Um, dangerous skill checks decided by GM and can give harm when failed. Uh, you check off your traits to mark your harm, uh, but that doesn't actually have a like mechanical effect in like it's just it's just that the number of traits doubles as a harm track. Um, it doesn't mean that when you check off a trait, you actually can't use that anymore. Um, so it's kind of an unsatisfying mechanic, I think. It was like, it's efficient, but it's not um, that interesting. And you also get gear, assets, bonds, and expertise. Then there's rules for taking on a mech. It's very deadly. So I might as well write that down. Uh, you start in a hard suit. Um, if you're not in a hard suit, you take any damage at all from a mech, you are dead. Um, a pilot cannot harm a mech um, without a hard suit. And at most they can do uh, 1d3 damage outside of extenuating circumstances. Um, and this is like just to interface the pilot play with the much more complex tactical combat in the mech situation. But basically, we'll just, you know, note um, we'll just note that there are uh, so mechs versus pilots uh, In combat, uh, pilot uh, without a hard suit dies instantly from mech fire. Um, and uh, pilots can't normally harm mechs. That's it. Okay, so um, this is the stuff you get. Uh, your backgrounds, um, I'm not gonna look into that because we, we kind of have a handle on that kind of thing. Uh, traits, they're cool, but we're not gonna talk about them. Um, you get a certain amount of storage on your mech um, and you can have some items to help you out. So uh, we'll just note that down that maybe there's some cool things to take out of here. Uh, check item list later. And items give you advantage, makes sense. Uh, talents, these are fairly involved. Um, maybe check these for, in, for inspiration. inspiration there we go uh, and yeah so then you go and talk about your Mac um, 
So there's a core and a shell. Okay, so this is important. Even though we're not gonna like get into some really crunchy mechanics with the game, having the idea of a core and a shell is possibly interesting. Uh, so mechs, they have a core, uh, can be modi modified by a shell. Um, so this is kind of like, you know, loadouts for your mech, right? Um, a template you can apply to your core. The higher level you are, the better shells you have access to. Um, and Your core is transferable from shell to shell, no matter the armament and loadout of your mech or what shell it is currently wearing, the core remains the same. So the core is like your, uh, the core is, so the, the core uh, is continuous throughout the game. Shell is, um, shells can be acquired depending on license level. And that determines your, sh your size and armor. Um, it has system points and mounts. Shells have size, armor, uh, mounts, and system points. Okay. And you also get core power, which is like a special super stock you can spend. Uh, you get, so yeah. Core power, uh, special stock for special abilities. Um, there's different weapon classes. Uh, these are auxiliary, main, heavy, and super heavy. And uh, so those are size classes, um, weapon types, so weapon size, weapon type can be uh, CQB, Rifle, Launcher, Cannon, Melee. Uh, then we have the damage type is Explosive, Kinetic, or Energy.
Okay. So we talked about this stuff. Armor does damage reduction. Size determines your movement. And reach. Okay, damage. You can have resistance versus a damage type. As resistances versus damage types. Um, armor is flat. Damage reduction. Um, And when you lose your HP, so either when your HP hits zero or when you take a crit, you take uh, damage on your critical track. Okay, so when you, so, okay, so crits, crit, uh, criticals, there is a critical track. Um, when you hit zero HP or uh, take a crit, you take a number of ticks on your critical track determined by the weapon size. complicated. Um, so when you take a crit, uh, you do that. And when you hit zero HP or you max out your crit gauge, you uh, roll on a crit table. You can take instability or vulnerability, and those add to the number of d6s you roll on the crit table. So that gets you closer to death. That's all fine, not super interesting. Um, now, let's talk about, so 
should probably add a weapons. Oops. Armor. Okay. Um, let's talk about heat. Heat and overheating. Because I think this could actually be relevant. Whereas crits is like, mm, no, I don't think so. That's too, too detailed. I think this is going to be the most detailed system we end up looking at. Because this is just so much com combat stuff to manage. Um, so you can take heat um, from electronic warfare, uh, environmental hazards, weapons that deal heat damage, firing weapons that generate heat, or overcharging your mech. Um, so you have a heat gauge. Um, you can take heat from these sources. Uh, it's basically a countdown clock. Uh, when you get into the danger zone, you get in trouble. If you mark the last box, you get an overheating check. And you can increase that with instability or volatility. And you can stabilize systems act, you can make a stabilized systems action to cool down. Um, it's possible for you to have a reactor meltdown. Okay, so, um, uh, when the so there is a heat danger zone that has special effects maxing out heat uh, forces a roll on the Or a breach chart. Um, and oh, sorry, volatility instability apply. Stabilizing, uh, stabilizing systems can reduce heat. Okay. Cool. And now, 
Uh, oh yeah, right. Also, you can get a reactor meltdown with too much heat. Too much heat can lead to a reactor meltdown. Oh no. Then there's death, cloning, blah, blah, blah. Repair rates. Uh, none of this is super important. Mech combat, flight, blah, blah, blah. I don't really care about that. Um, grappling rules. Okay, I think we're done. I think we are done with Lancer. That was a big one. It was a big one. And I think I lost a ton of viewers because it's just way too crunchy. People just can't handle the crunch. Um, <laughs> so that's Lancer. Um, let's move on to our next game. Just make a note here. So let's look at a much simpler game than Lancer. Let's look at Mech Noir. So to make um, a character in this game, uh, you pick trainings uh, that you have. Um, these give you verbs, um, and then you can apply adjectives to those verbs. Um, so these are the verbs in the game hack, fight, move, operate, prowl, shoot, treat. Um, and then you add these adjectives to the verbs. Um, so that's the basic game system. Um, And you pick some connections for your character, uh, and then you assign relationship adjectives, purchase objects with your cred, and finish your protagonist. But we're interested not so much in that. We're interested in rigs. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six types of rigs in the game. Um, Some tags trump other tags. You can disable a tag with an attack.
You can spend armor to avoid a tag being disabled. And so these are your base tags, and then you get upgrade tags and negative adjectives that have been applied to your Mac. So when do you actually die? So I think that would have to be in the core rules, uh, unfortunately. So yeah, so what we note here um, to get into sort of like, what can we take away from this system? Uh, let's do that. So mech noir, okay, so the system is based on tags, uh, tags based system. Um, damage is applied uh, in the form of adjectives, negative adjectives, uh, similar to how harm works in blades. Um, and uh, can be resisted with armor. Uh, tag, uh, oh, so it can be applied, damage can be applied in the form of negative adjectives or uh, removing tags. Can be resisted with armor. Um, yeah. And that's kind of the whole system. Oh, there are potential upgrades. So potential upgrades add more tags. Upgrades add more tags. And tags have Tags have descriptions and can trump other tags. Uh, have set descriptions and can trump override other tags. Uh, okay, so I think that's the, pretty much the whole system um, for the mech side of things. Um, So this is pretty interesting, and I think we can probably make some use of this, uh, given that uh, the item system in Blaze in the Dark is, or sorry, in a World of Dungeons um, Turbo is so simple. Uh, we might want to lean on tags a little bit um, as a way to do things. So that's Mechnor. That's finished. And since we didn't actually take very long with that game, because it's so slight, um, I'm actually going to pick up um, going to pick up uh, here. Where is it? Fate. Might be in a different folder. Actually just Yeah. Okay. Uh, oops.
There we go. Mecha versus Kaiju. All right. Um, so this is like a super robot game. It's obviously uh, not really what we're aiming for, which is more like real robot, but this is uh, probably one of the most prominent games that um, introduces mecha mechanics into the Fate core system. I've also used it with uh, Fate Accelerated, but um, mainly with Fate Core. I ran a long campaign of this game. Um, it's been a long time. Mecha versus Kaiju. Yeah. Okay. So obviously, uh, there are skills, um, as in normal Fate Core. Sorry, I'll make that larger for you. Um, and here we are. Um, we get new stunts. And these are like very, like, so there, there are some stunts like engineering, pilot, um, and these give you bonuses. So they're similar to talents in, um, in uh, Wodu Turbo. Um, so I'll just write that down. Uh, stunts, which are uh, stunts similar to Wodu Turbo um, talents uh, for piloting mechanics, etc. Uh, not all PCs are pilots in this game. Um, I remember that. I had some sort of mechanic characters and that kind of thing. Um, there's some basic sort of tactical combat things. And then there's a bunch of setting crap that we don't care about. Um, I never used this setting anyway. Uh, it felt very sort of like not my thing. Um, so here are the mecha related roles. Um, so you can have group mecha control. I'm not interested in that. That's like a super robot trope. I don't like that. Um, player damage in mecha combat. Um, so this is like does damage pass through to the pilot instead of um, going to the mech. Um, so that's a possibility. Oh yeah, I forgot about the optional rules for Lancer. Um, we're gonna have to go back and look at those because there's, some of those are really interesting. Um, okay, so you uh, optional uh, damage pass through to pilot uh, in some cases. Um, oh yeah, uh, mechs get their own character sheets. Um, scale, um, depending on the rules, how you want to do it. Um, there's two scales, human and giant. Um, speed, stress, so Mecha take, like they have the same systems as any other character, they get their own character sheet and they take stress and consequences just like a normal fate. Um, 
And then we have movement stuff. And Oh right, you get a design philosophy for your mech, which you can use like a normal character aspect. Um, mechs get a design philosophy uh, instead of a normal uh, fate character concept. Uh, can be used for compels um, and with fate points uh, as normal. Uh, and then mechs get weapon systems. Um, you get a, what is it, construction point? Yeah, construction point budget, and you spend it on weapon systems. Uh, they get, yeah, so uh, mechs have a, a construction point budget they spend on weapon systems uh, and these work similar to stunts Okay, so let's just go and I think that's it for this game. Oh, you can also get armor, which also you spend CP on. And then some other systems, but basically their movement, armor, weapons, uh, power systems, tactical systems, all these systems um, they uh, act like studs and then this system is an optional system, power rating system Oh, so if you overshoot your power rating on an attack roll, then you overheat. Uh, depending on how much you're over, you lose access to mech aspects. Okay. Uh, so overheating. Heat systems, um, mecha get a power rating. Um, if they roll over their power rating, uh, they lose a number of aspects determined by how much they're over. And 
and then there's like different size classes, but that's again like a super robot thing that is not super relevant to us. Okay, that's it. Uh, so let's just quickly review um, the optional rules for uh, Lancer, and then I think we are going to be uh, finished. We are going to be finished with um, looking at other games. I know I just read this stuff. Okay, here we go. Uh, mana. Changing core assumptions section on page 31. Okay, so pilots don't have access to a printer. Um, pilots don't have access to a base. I want to simulate currency. Uh, so one thing Lancer does um, is it puts everything into the license system, right? Uh, but you can change that, um, do something more granular. Um, it's assumed pilots are still paid in mana, currency, etc. You just don't track it. Doesn't you abstract it out? So there's a list of values you can use if you want to track money. There's a cost list here. Um, and there's an upgrade cost you can do. Uh, and you can also buy license upgrades instead of automatically getting them after finishing a mission. So this is basically um, XP for gold, uh, except you have to buy what your upgrade is. Uh, okay, so let's add that in just to be thorough. Mana uh, can be used uh, optionally um, purchase equipment 
uh, upgrade equipment and buy licenses level up uh, XP for gold basically okay and that's the main assumptions to change so we did it we did it we got through all of these games um, I don't think I want to look at any more uh, so now I think it's a good time to think about to review let's review what we've written and then um, I'm going to start talking about how we can start to change this system. Okay, so here's all the rules we saw. So Mech Warrior wasn't really that important. Stars without number. Um, so Mecha types, uh, we could have, say, Fighting Mecha versus Support Mecha. Maybe. Um, I'm not really interested in Cymex. This is just a thing that's relevant to Stars Without Number. Um, I think the mecha sizes... Um, I'm, I'm kind of only interested in like one size of mech, but then there's going to be like... Okay, so let's, let's write this stuff down. Let's write this stuff down. Okay. Uh, oh! Apocalypse World. Right, the landfall marine. Ugh. Yeah, let's look at vehicles in Apocalypse World because can't forget Apocalypse World. I mean, it's a big one. Okay, last one. Apocalypse World. And I could have swore that I have the Landfall Marine, but I'm going to have to look it up. Um, so first we'll start here, uh, look at vehicles, and then we'll look at the Landfall Marine. So I'm just going to download that right now. There we go. All right, so we got the Landfall Marine, uh, and we're gonna look at... Uh, right, we're gonna look at vehicles. So, 113. This is maybe the wrong thing. Oh, this is for treating them as threats. Okay, wrong, wrong, wrong. Seventy four. Uh, 
236. Okay. Um, so you're going to have speed, handling, armor, and massive. You picked strengths, looks, weaknesses, and a battle option. So what this means is, so because this game is interested in car chases, speed is a big deal. Uh, handling is a big deal. So you're basically adding tags on to a few stats. Okay. Let's look at the Landfall Marines mech. Okay, so the, the walking suit has two operational modes, baseline and charged up. In baseline, it can walk at moderate speeds, lift and carry moderate loads, manipulate things with its hands, and use its basic comms and sensor systems. In order to sprint, leap, fly, exert powerful physical force, or use most of its systems, including its targeting and weapon systems, it must charge up. The charge countdown on your walking suit sheet represents the reactor energy that these actions consume. Uh, when the charge countdown reaches 12 o'clock, the walking suit has reached the operational limits of its reactor and needs to be cooled back down to baseline to recharge. The process of charging a walking suit up from baseline or cooling it back down to baseline only takes a seven, second or two. Um, hard shutdown is a failure mode that walking suits are designed to avoid, but which may be inflicted on a walking suit under some circumstances. So... Uh, when your walking suit is in baseline, erase one charge segment for each hour that passes. When you charge up a walking suit, roll plus weird. On a 10 plus, mark no charge countdown segments. Uh, on 7 to 9, mark one charge countdown segment. And on a miss, mark two charge countdown segments. Um, okay, so this is like basically a heat system. Um, okay, so... I don't care about the vehicle stuff. It's not that interesting. Let's talk about the walking suit. Uh, Landfall Marine. So the charge clock. Right. Uh, the charge clock, which is basically like heat. Um, you also get an ammo clock. So you get an ammo clock and a charge clock. So whenever you do something really significant, you're going to roll to see how your charge goes. That seems like a lot of rolling. Um, 
I'll, I'll think about it. So, uh, roll to see how much charge is used every time a major action is taken. Um, and the ammo clock I guess works just like ammo normally in Apocalypse World. Page 12, maybe? Battle moves. One sixty six, I guess.
still really confused. I'm gonna have to ask somebody about that because it's just like... I don't see... So if I look at other playbooks, oh, I see. They don't. They don't have ammo clocks. It's only this that has an ammo clock, and for some reason, Vincent forgot to write. anything about spending ammo. Oh, here it is. No. So for all mounted we oh, for all mounted weapons mark one ammo countdown segment for each firing. Okay. So every time you fire, you mark a tick on your clock. It's very simple. All right. Not even as complicated as volley in uh, Dungeon World. Every time you fire, mark off a segment. When you max out, you can't use your weapons. Uh, and there's like what? No, that's about it. Okay. And... You can ram people with your weapon or with your, your walking suit and so on. Uh, there's special rules for, oh, sorry. There's special rules for how it damages other units. Uh, rules. Uh, attacking um, people uh, vehicles and buildings and then it has weapon systems of course targeting systems stealth systems they give you bonuses, flight systems, have tags. Stats are power, agility, armor, and massive. Okay, we did it. <laughs> we looked at Apocalypse World. So now we can finally start to talk about our ideas, our summary. 
Okay, so mech size. Um, uh, I only want um, like person versus mech, right? Like this is, there's no like light mech, heavy mech. Um, so that's similar to the way Mecha versus Kaiju does it by default. Uh, aside from that, um, so let's look back again at breakers. Armor in breakers. is damage reduction so that's fine no big deal we can just leave that as is i'm definitely not going to use resistance values like in um like in lancer that's just way too fiddly um i think that like we could have different yeah 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 so like we'll go um okay so armor is straight DR like in breakers, but um, damage type resistance uh, can be taken. Uh, wait, so rolls in breakers are player facing. Uh, which means that there are no resistance rolls, right? So normal damage is 1d6, weak harm does d3, really powerful harm does d6. So we'll say that um, you can take a special kind of armor, uh, but damage type resistance can be taken that uh, reduces that damage to D3. That damage type uh, to D3. That way it's like we don't need to have like a special damage reduction thing. We just go, okay, you took um, energy weapons resistance as one of your equipment uh, options. Okay, that means that uh, this laser shot that is coming into you or in at you is is only going to do d3 damage uh, No Reduces the damage type by one step uh-huh So uh, 2d6 goes down to 1d6 goes down to 1d3 Boom boom that's damage reduction simple good uh, next, let's continue looking at our notes. Uh, speed. Speed is a thing in breakers already. Um, and I think we're going to go speed is tied to load, just like in breakers. So speed is tied to load as per breakers rules. Um, we're gonna fiddle with that a little bit, but uh, basically I like this idea of encumbrance being determined by how many items you've taken. Um, and we're, we're making this, we're making speed simple by um, not having like suits, light mechs, heavy mechs. Um, because usually, as we've seen in looking at these different games, um, the speed value is often modified by the mech size. Uh, but by not having mech size, we are uh, simplifying that issue. Okay. Next, um, targeting. Targeting. Um, I 
think that so here's my idea uh, attacks uh, are only going to use one weapon at a time unless the player uh, alpha strikes um, if the player alpha strikes they can target multiple individual targets uh, and then gets to so how do players normally deal damage? Let's look at this. So you have a weapons, weapons, weapons. Here we are, D6 damage, um, close combat or ranged. So an alpha strike, um, so you have a special weapon or you can have Okay, yeah, yeah, this could be good for the alpha strike. Roll 3d6, assign one to each target in a small area. So, um, yeah, so they're gonna, so alpha strike will be, um, okay. So let's just let's let's talk about alpha strikes. So alpha strikes, um, you are going to roll damage for each of your weapons and assign a target. Assign uh, one target to each in a small area then that's going to interface with a heat system. So ha uh, uh, draws heat, right? That's going to produce heat. Um, but the option is there. Let's carry on. Abilities. Um, abilities are going to be so. Abilities are uh, we're going to use talents, as in breakers. Um, so yeah, so. Pilot abilities will be represented by talents. So that's kind of similar, um, kind of like Lancer. Um, and then uh, mech, mecha, uh, features uh, represented by equipment. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think this is working. Okay, uh, damage. So in this game, in Breakers, you have HP. Um, when you take damage past your HP, you make a resolve roll. So I'm gonna say, I haven't decided on the dice mechanic yet, but So 
So if you're killed, you can choose to survive by taking a scar. Um... Yes, so if your mech is going to be reduced to zero HP, you can instead choose to pass the damage on to your pilot by way of a scar. So the pilot doesn't have HP, but the pilot um, the pilot can take scars as damage. So mechs have HP, pilots have scars. Boom. Okay, so damage. Uh, damage. Uh, so we'll say uh, mecha have HP, pilots have scars. Like have a scar track. Um, if the mech will be reduced to zero HP, the pilot can decide to instead pass through the dam or sorry the, the player. Player can decide to instead pass through the damage um, with scars. Uh, the if the damage if the damage will uh, reduce. Um, the mech to uh, what should I say um, to what do you call that when you make a number negative Addition, subtraction, multiplication, negation. The negative version of a positive number is referred to as its negation. Okay. So if the damage will reduce the mech to um, more, uh, to less than um, the negative of half its total HP, the pilot must take two scars. Uh, to resist the damage. There's an idea. So for example, um, uh, the mech has uh, 10 HP and goes and would go down to minus six 
HP, meaning that the pilot can resist by taking two scars. Okay. So that just means that, like, if you are getting hit by, like, this massive missile barrage, it has some consequences. It's not like, oh, it doesn't really matter how much I go under. Um, it's all the same in the end. Okay. Now... Uh, mecha repair. So do we want to do it like in Lancer, where you just, if you take a rest, your HP is all restored? Um, or do we want to do it um, like in something like Stars Without Number, where it's more finicky? Um... How does how does breakers handle it? Let's let's look at breakers first. So when you take a rest, you get to roll one d six for each of your unspent strain and recover that much HP. Um, you can also use a first aid kit to recover one d six. So I like the idea of recovering a certain amount per rest. Um, Dependent on your strain. Hmm. Not so sure about that, though. I mean, it's not a terrible system, but maybe it's not thematic enough. Okay, what about this? This is a little bit more complicated, but um, I think it might be better for this type of game. Uh, so healing. Um, so when you rest, you can heal at least 1d6 HP. The GM will add advantage d6s depending on the quality of the repair facilities available. The players um, can choose to spend an auto repair kit for an additional 1d6 HP healing. Um, and uh, uh, the players can choose To spend one strain to um, uh, get an extra 1d6 HP healing. Um, and this is spent after strain restored by resting. Uh, 
So we'll just say instead uh, reduces maximum strain restored by resting by one. Okay. Um, So like maybe we have questions here like um is the uh so uh is the rest area uh equipped with um a repair station plus 1d6. Is the uh, is the equipment high spec plus 1d6? Um, Are there uh, technicians, PCs, or NPCs capable of? Uh, are there technicians or uh, are there technicians available to perform repairs? And finally, uh, um, is there the necessary material to perform repairs? Material. Uh, there we go. To perform. Mater matter. El. Yeah. Is there the necessary material to perform repairs? Uh, is there the exact material necessary the exact material okay um And that seems fair. Um, Okay, that's good. I think that's good for healing. All right. Oh, and also, um, 
strain. How do you restore strain? Oops, I mean not strain, scars. Can you restore scars? I think you can't. Okay. So yeah, so there's no way to restore scars. Like if you, if, if, so if, if, um, if damage blows through to your pilot and it's a lot of damage, like you are in big trouble, um, which is I think kind of what I want here. Um, that's, that's, that's good. That's good. Um, cool. So scars uh, cannot be healed by any normal means. Cool. All right, let's keep going. Um, maintenance. So I think this is a thing that was even in Lancer actually. Okay, so resting will reset the heat gauge and um, yeah, so we should add that to uh, resting, so this should be resting. Uh, resting resets the heat gauge. Um, that's just like flat, you go back down to zero. So are we gonna have heat and strain? Maybe there's a heat gauge, but you only get um, you only get one um, one strain to spend, which you can spend on anything. But heat you can only spend on doing mech stuff. I think that that sounds like pretty good to me. Uh, so. Uh, strain 
is not restored by this rest. So okay, so strain, or we might we might as well call it might as well call it something different. We'll call it like edge. Um, okay, edge. Um, a one stock resource that can be used. Um, how does this work in turbo? Uh, or is it going to be one? Because I don't know that that idea that you have a number of strain equal to your level is pretty interesting. Let's keep it as it is in Wodu Turbo. So you're gonna have two tracks. You're gonna have um, a heat track and a strain track. And the, yeah, okay. So let's just uh, head on back here. Okay, so there will be heat track and there will be a strain track. So let's let's talk about um, let's talk about heat. Um, so we know it's restored by resting. Um, what happens if it maxes out? Uh So we'll say this, um, if uh, the mech overheats, um, one of its uh, pieces of equipment is disabled and the mech takes 1d6 damage. Um, Anything else? Maybe it should be 2d6. How much you start with?
Oh, you have eight. Yeah, so I think... And you get plus four per level. So I think 1d6 is significant enough. Um, uh, if the... Uh, so... You overheat, you take the damage, then we'll say you reduce the heat by one. Then its heat is reduced by one. Okay, so you can restore by resting. You can also um, so we'll say there's an, there's an item, uh, you can spend a heat sink uh, So there isn't uh, a disposable heat sink, but I think what I will do, is, uh, or what I will say here, um, so there will be equipment heat sink um, can be spent to uh, reduce heat by 1d6. Boom, so you have you have to take on a certain amount of heat sinks as your part of your equipment, um, and you can spend them to reduce your heat. Uh, if you overheat, you just reduce your heat by one. Um, if you rest, you reduce your heat entirely. Uh, but say if you overheat and then you fire again um, and you heat up again, you're gonna take more damage. Um, so heat is like a very serious issue. Um, assuming you are not spending heat sinks. And heat sinks add to encumbrance just like they do in battle tech. So I think that works pretty damn well. Um, now let's look at what the sources of heat were here in Lancer. Um, yeah, so I like all this stuff. This is all cool. 
So these sources add heat. We'll just go ahead and say that. And cool. Um, and so instead of saying um, overcharging your mech adds heat, we'll say alpha strikes add heat. Uh, alpha strikes add heat. generate heat and alpha strikes um, we will say this produces uh, so normally using a weapon Using a weapon that produces heat will produce one heat. But in the case of alpha striking, it will produce uh, 1d3 heat. Yeah. Or is it just one, one heat for every weapon you use? which is more fun. I think it's, well, I have to think about that. So we'll put a question mark here. Um, and weapons that deal the heat damage, they have the plus uh, heat tag in their description. Or no, wait, this is... Uh... Okay, so this... Okay, so plus heat tag and weapons that generate heat are have the plus hot tag. Um, yeah. Cool. And the last thing we'll say, alpha strikes generate heat. Um, and what about this? Um, Overdrive. Overdrive generates heat. Um, and what that does is um, we'll make a separate entry for overdrive. Um, uh, Uh, it gives uh, plus 1d6 to um, a role involving uh, a mech um, and adds 1d6 heat. So like this could be really bad. Um, so it's, it's something you're only gonna use in like 
a desperate situation. Uh, desperate situational use um, and uh, functions like strain, uh, but at a huge cost. Okay. Um, and can strain be applied to Can strain be applied to damage rolls? Yep, it can. So yeah, we'll say, um, you can add an additional D6 damage on top of your alpha strike by burning, by going into overdrive. And instead of calling this overdrive, um, can we call it overboost? Is that how you spell that in Armored Core? Because it's just the best. Um, over the boost yeah our over to boost um Cool. Feeling it, feeling it. Um, okay, so we have strain, we have heat, uh, we have damage, we have resting. Um, ammo. Ammo. So we saw a couple of approaches to this issue, right? Um, we saw in the case of Stars Without Number, you make a check after combat to determine if you're out of ammo. Um, difficulty increases every fight without resupply. That's pretty interesting. Um, I believe that... Lancer does not track ammo. Let's see. Yeah, Lancer just doesn't track it. It's like, yeah, it doesn't matter, whatever, it's fine. Um, generally, Lancer seems to be a game that's like very um, loose with resources. They're just like, eh, it's fine, don't worry about it. Um, I like this idea of rolling an ammo check and not having to do it too much. 
How do we do this in breakers? You just have the, the weapon, you can just use it, right? So maybe this is just like if the G if the player rolls a miss, the GM says, "Oh, you're out of ammo." Like use up their stuff, right? Um, yeah. So like, okay, so ammo. Like we're not really gonna write very much about it, but um, so ammo. Um, we're going to say it's not, uh, specifically tracked, but, um, uh, GM can remove use of a weapon, uh, w on a miss with justification of using up their stuff. Um, restored, should be restored. Uh, when the Squadron has access to resupply. It's hacky. I don't know. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. Um, we'll have to say. We'll have to see in play if that's satisfactory or not. But definitely, it definitely removes the need to have yet another track on the character sheet, right? Um, I really like that idea of like, oh man, like every time you can't get resupply, um, you end up uh, having to make a harder and harder roll on your ammo. But um, the GM can handle that. I'll trust the GM can handle that. Okay. So, um, weapon types, right? Um, could be a thing. So, could we can have explosive, kinetic, and energy weapons? So, if you if you make a weapon. Okay, so we're gonna have to like include some kind of rules for making a mech, and it's like gonna be very, very basic. It needs to be like as simple as Wodu character creation, right? Um, okay, so mecha creation. Um, I'm just going to sketch out some notes here and I'll come back to this later. Um, so what we're going to do is um, Mecha creation is based on a So you make a loadout off the equipment list. And the loadout should include OK, 
Okay, so first of all, you choose a weight class. Your weight class determines your your uh, sub, your uh, your mount point limit and your speed. Okay, so choose a weight class. Uh, you choose um, uh, ultralight, light, uh, standard, or heavy. Ultralight, light, standard, heavy. Um, this determines uh, determines mount points. Oops, mount points and speed. Uh, so we'll say um, gear will be divided into primary and secondary systems. So uh, uh, equipment, uh, we'll say is, is divided equipment divide into uh, primary versus secondary systems. Um, so we'll go with, basically this is gonna be gear on hand versus your pack. These are primary systems, these are secondary systems. Um, so you, uh, so uh, primary systems equals uh, pack size um, and secondary systems. Uh, okay, so yeah, primary system mount points. Uh, and secondary system mount points equals Oh no! Wait. Sorry. This is a uh, on hand. Uh, equip limit in breakers, and this is um, pack, right? Yeah, pack equip limit. Um, uh, these are separate uh, equipment lists. Uh, so you choose a weight class that gives you uh, your equip limit. Then you choose. Um, A configuration um, this is your equipment loadout um, and choose a mecha uh, mech model name make it cool um, And maybe <sighs> do we want it so that so when the player levels up, they will get something off of the talent list, right? Mm -hmm. 
the gear the mech gets should never change. But maybe they get a... Is it just gear? Do they get some kind of like special system? They can choose from like... So like it could be like write three special systems for your mech and pick one. When you level up, you get another one. Yeah. Okay, so write uh, three um, Write three special systems for your mech model. Um, pick one at character creation and uh, you get you get one more at ace and another at veteran. Pick one more at Ace and another at Veteran. Okay, so you get a weight class, um, which gives you a number of mount points and your speed. You choose a configuration. Um, you choose a model name, and then uh, so the, the, the model name should be last. And uh, write three special. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. That's obviously like this is um, subject. To GM approval. Um, so that's mecha creation. Uh, character creation is going to be, you know, you pick your talents and stuff. It's pretty much the same. I will write that out later. Um, weapons have damage types, tags, um, separated into uh, normal and special weapons as in breakers. Make some minor changes there. Um, some have the uh, hot tag, others don't, right? So, like, you can have your auto cannons, you can have your machine guns um, that don't generate as much heat, but they're going to do less damage. Or they're going to be um, kinetic only. Generally, kinetic weapons won't generate much heat. And when you... 
So when you hit an enemy with a weapon that has the heat tag, um, there's no like rule for tracking. their heat so maybe it's like I guess they just do extra damage basically and then there's the fictional positioning we'll see um, and bonuses and penalties about the same. There's no cloud of woe. Um, is that like a mission clock? It could be a mission clock. Mission clock replaces the cloud of woe. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna add a couple of quick things here and then I'll be finished for today. So we'll just say, um, mission clocks, a uh, mission clock, replaces cloud of woe um, and also um, oh yeah loot So you don't, it's not really going to be a game about getting loot, but um, there will be end of mission questions. End of mission questions determine payoff. Um, payoff determines advancement um, performance is graded as per uh, breakers e2 a to d grades um, and So every time you complete an adventure, so I don't think we need A to do grades for performance. So much as we'll just say like, um, okay, so payoff determines your advancement. Uh, Performance is graded. Um, uh, exceptional performance uh, grants two ticks on the XP track. 
Um, so, and this is based on a target number. Um, so are you over or under? If you're under, then you get average performance. If you're over, you get exceptional performance. Um, and maybe there's a role. Um, I like that. Um, and then uh, we all oh, right resources um whenever the players wish to acquire an asset they make a fortune roll with their rank um Uh, uh, plus or minus situational bonuses and what is it? Bonuses and penalties. So this is going to be uh, resources. Basically, they make a resources test. Um, yeah. Okay, I think that's enough for today. Uh, we've got a lot here. And the next stuff I want to decide is like, um, for, so for next time, Uh, so we'll say for next time, decide on dice mechanic um, and work on equipment lists. Um, yeah, cool, cool. Uh, and I'll just add a title above this. Um, previous works. Boom. We're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, okay, so uh, if you watched all the way to the end of this long process, well, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll be around with more hacking of this game. I think we're about roughly 50% of the way to having a playable game. So see you soon. Bye.